Let's talk about the greenback. Is it still the world's reserve currency and does it deserve to be so? Uh, yeah, there's no um, there's no contest from anywhere else. I think the world would be a better place if, if you like, if, if the pe folks in second and third place were a little bit closer, that would probably be healthy uh, in a geopolitical sense. But, you know, a strong euro doesn't mean that the euro is about to become the world's reserve currency. It means that uh, a currency that is perennially held down by a structural flaw at its heart through not having joined up fiscal policy um, is getting a little bit stronger and might at some point look like a big current account surplus economy's currency, uh, which usually means it's too strong for the happiness of the central bank. I remember a day, Kit, and you do as well, when supermodels and professional athletes wanted to take their pay in euros versus dollars. We know kind of what happened to that whole regime there. Let's talk about what's driving the action. Is this a story about true dollar weakness that we've seen in the near to medium term, or is it more about the strength of other currencies? It, it's, more, it's more the U.S. than any other single thing. I mean, the, 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 the um, European Recovery Fund was a big deal in the sense that it was a, um, a, a first step down the path to a more joined up fiscal policy that allows Europe to, to, to have policy, not just rely on the European Central Bank all the time. That's a, that's a big deal for the currency. It's a big deal for Europe. Um, but the biggest thing that happened is when the Federal Reserve came into markets in the week that ended um, March 23rd, when they gave us the Main Street program, a currency swap deal to reliquify the global financial system, when they opened up the Treasury market for, for repos in a wider basis to, again, reliquify the system and prevent that seizing up, uh, when they dramatically increased their, their purchases of, of um, several different kinds of assets. That's more dramatic than I can remember the Fed being in in the financial crisis or in the Asian crisis. And that, that to my mind, um, that was the start of the weaker dollar. You cannot have such an accommodative Federal Reserve um, reliquifying the global economy uh, without having a weaker currency. And by the way, it's a good thing for everybody that they did avoid a big freeze up of dollars in the global financial system. Aren't there silver linings, Kit, when it comes to having a weaker currency? I, I know that it's interesting because President Trump at one point in his in his presidency during the first term over here basically said that he wanted weak dollar. He wanted weak dollars. This would help the exporting business and everything else. Is there a scenario right now where the U.S. exporters and multinational companies can actually benefit if there is a sustained trend modestly lower for the greenback versus everyone else? Yeah, th this is going to take some time because the, the reason that a weak dollar is good for the global economy and good for U.S. exporters at the same time isn't just the, the weakness of the dollar. It's that when the dollar's weaker, it's because capital is flowing out of the United States and into the places in the world with more attractive growth prospects. So we saw some of the people who were complaining, um, the finance minister in Brazil complained about currency wars in 2010 because the real was too strong and they were accumulating too many reserves and they had interest rates that were too low. At the early stage of when you get um, a weaker dollar coming through uh, with money flowing out, you get nothing but healthy capital flowing into these economies that gets global growth moving. Now, the challenge at the moment is if you look at Latin America, if you look at South Africa, if you look at Turkey, you have a bunch of countries that um, are reliant on foreign capital, but, but they don't have the luxury of quantitative easing, modern monetary theory, um, any of that to help their economies out of the hole that they're in as a result of this pandemic. So uh, the weaker dollar will be good when the weakness spreads through some of those emerging markets. If it's concentrated in the euro dollar rate and the dollar yen rate and the sterling rate, it, it's, not so, it's not so wonderful for the global economy. In fact, what it does then is it means that a currency like the euro goes up not just against the dollar, but against a lot of the rest of the world and in trade weighted terms get stretched and worries the ECB. But this is, you know, again, the alternative is worse. So the Fed is freeing up the global capital market. Um, I, I think we need, I don't know, a vaccine. We need medical progress to get um, animal spirits fl getting money into uh, the world's emerging markets and building the, the foundations of a big positive economic cycle. So that'll take, that'll take some time, but, but we're, we're on our way. Kit, before we let you go, I've got about 15, 20 seconds left here. What's the most compelling geographic area for you to focus on right now, given the dynamic you just spoke of? Uh, Asia. Um, Asia, because that's where the, uh, the, the pandemic's been fought most successfully, uh, and that's where there's still some growth potential. A country like Australia 
that went in with a big current account surplus and a budget surplus has the ammunition to benefit from uh, the economic recovery when it comes when we defeat the pandemic. 